Visit Sailrite.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. Hi, I'm Eric Grant. In this tutorial video, we're going to show you how to make a smiley faced zipper window in clear vinyl window material. Boat enclosures can be very stuffy. Installing zipper openings in curtain panels can help provide needed airflow. In this tutorial video, we'll show you how to install that curved zipper in clear vinyl window material. And in a separate video, we'll show how to install the facing along the sides to make it a curtain panel. For this tutorial video, we'll be using 30 gauge strata glass that's available from Sailrite for our sample enclosure panel. I have my clear vinyl window material on a table and it's actually sat overnight with some weights on it just to get rid of the, uh, the tendency for it to roll on me because when it's shipped, it comes as a rolled sheet. So now, because of that, it's fairly flat and makes it easier to work with. After we're done with this smiley face window, we are going to put a two inch facing around the perimeter. That's a separate video, but that, what I wanna do is I wanna put place my zipper about four inches from the edge of the clear vinyl window material. At the top here, this will be the top of my window, I want the zipper to actually go into the facing. So I'm gonna mark at one and a half inches from the edge of the clear vinyl here. And what I'm using here is a scryball uh, pencil black for vinyl. The location of your smiley face window is completely up to you. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna have it about four inches from the bottom side. So I'm just gonna strike a line here. So I basically have a rectangle or a square that uh, has no line across here. Now I have to make these edges curved and the more gradual the curve, the easier it is to make your zipper go around. So if you had a really sharp curve like this, it'd be almost impossible to do. And one of the techniques I like to do is I like to take a regular five gallon bucket and place it over my two lines. So with the bucket lined up with my two marks, what I'll do is I'll take my scryball pencil and I'll trace around the bottom edge of the bucket. This is the tightest arc that we recommend. A more gradual radius will make it easier. So I'll do that here and I'll do it over here on the side. So here's our marks on our clear vinyl and this is a wet rag. Look how nicely it comes up with a wet rag. The next step is to baste binding to the outside of the clear vinyl window material. This is a project where I recommend that you get the quarter inch uh, basting tape for canvas and upholstery. Uh, we're going to be using this for the zippers and you get the 3 8 inch and we're going to be using this for the binding. We want to use a 3 quarter inch binding uh, for a smiley face zipper and this is a bias binding and you can tell that by the seam here. The seam is going diagonally across the fabric and sewing together. The idea of a bias binding is that it takes a curve a lot better than a straight cut binding. If this is a umbrella binding, but you could also use a vinyl binding, just make sure it's a bias cut. So I'm gonna pre-measure this around the perimeter, leaving a few extra inches hanging off the edge. So I'm just gonna walk it around my curve so that I know approximately the size to cut it. And I will cut it a little bit oversized. So I'm gonna cut it right here. No reason to use a hot knife because uh, these ends are gonna be covered. Now we need one binding for this side and one for this side. So we're gonna do that exact same thing again, walking it on the opposite side. We're gonna take our 3 8 inch seam stick and we're gonna place it on the underside of the binding. Kind of in the center of the binding, all the way down its length. And we'll do that to both pieces. We're gonna peel the transfer paper off, revealing the 3 8 inch seam stick for canvas. This is a non-yellowing basting tape, so you want to get this from Sarah. It's the best stuff out there. Now, here's the edge of our mark that we made. We're going to go a little bit past that just to make sure that uh, we're good. And notice that I'm not putting it directly on top of that line that we struck on the vinyl. I'm putting it uh, off by about a sixteenth of an inch because that's going to be our cut line. Now, when I get to the corner down here. Notice I'm not also peeling off all of my basting tape because anywhere that the double-sided tape sticks to the glass will be an area that will have to be cleaned um, because the, it, it will leave residue. When I get to the turn here, I'm going to actually put my finger on the binding because this side has to 
uh, stretch and this side has to shrink and I'm going to force it to take that curve and hopefully not get any wrinkles in it because it's a bias binding. That looks good. Then we're coming back down here to the straightaway. Now I'm a little bit off here, so I'm going to peel it up, make sure that I'm the same distance from that struck line. So there's one. And notice that the corners down here, you can kind of see this is wanting to bubble up. Now when it gets sewn, it's actually going to flatten it nicely. So you don't have to worry about that. There are a few little wrinkles here because of the fact that it has to shrink up. Now we're going to take our second binding and we're going to place it right beside this on the inside. And we're going to leave the same gap between that line. So this is what your gap should look like. Now we don't need all this at the top here, so uh, remember this is going to have a future facing here, so the facing will be two inches down so it'll cover these ends. Anytime you work with clear vinyl window material, it's a good time to test tension on some scrap. Usually when we sew clear vinyl window material, we do it in a straight stitch. We do it in a max stitch length of about six millimeters, at least for the ultra feed. And then uh, you can move the needle left, right, or center because this is the ultra feed LSZ with this lever here. I'm going to move it to the left and I'm going to take some scrap first. This is the binding that we're using with the same clear vinyl window material and I basted it on as you can see by the basting tape. We want to set tension, okay? And we want to show you what to expect when you set tension. So when I'm going to be, I'm going to be sewing next to the binding and I'm going to use the inside edge of the presser foot and run it along the edge of the binding. So I've moved my needle all the way to the left to accommodate that because I want this stitch to be very close to that. So let's test our t tension to see what we get. Now I'm going to do some reversing here at the end, just to make sure that it's reversing well. <clears throat> so you can see here on this scrap, the top side looks great. Uh, there's no knots. The stitch looks nice and neat. Now let's flip it over and look at the bottom side. Now what you can expect on the bottom side is that the thread and the knot, even though I have a pretty good amount of tension, the knot's actually on the bottom side of the clear vinyl window material. I can feel it with my finger here. You can't probably see it as well as I can feel it. That's expected. Um, th this means basically I have about the maximum tension. It's very difficult to pull the loop, or what we sometimes call the knot, into clear vinyl window material. So you can almost expect that knot to be on the bottom side. Now I don't want any loose stitches, and as you can see here in this sample piece, I have no loose stitches. So my tension's about right. If I had loose stitches, what I would do is I'd turn the tension knob uh, this direction to tighten up the, the upper tension and that would pull the loose stitches into the fabric or do that if I have an excessive knot on the bottom side. But I really like the way it's set right here so I don't have to do anything. In the next chapter we'll sew the inside edges of the binding only. Now I like using the same color thread as I do uh, my uh, umbrella. I'm using a black so I'm using black thread. That way it blends in well. You can use a PTFE thread too if you'd like. And what we want to do is we want to sew the inside edge of the binding very close to this edge here and here. Okay, remember I'm going to use the inside of the presser foot as my guide and I have my needle all the way to the left here and I'm in straight stitch. Now I'm not going to do any reversing up here mainly because there's going to be a facing that covers this so I'm just going to sew straight through and I'm going to go fairly slow here because I want this stitch to look nice.
Now look here. This actually came loose uh, when it was sitting on the table and I didn't even notice it. So, but this one's okay because I can see my black line. So this one's still uh, in the right position. So we'll reposition that in a little bit. Now when I get to the corner, I have to worry about if my glass is too large, it might hit the, uh, uh, the sewing machine over here. So I may have to scroll this up. So you want to be aware of that because if you hit that and you continue to sew, it's going to mess up your stitches. So I'm just slowly going around this corner and here's the corner coming up and it's going to hit there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll this back so it doesn't hit. I'm going to smooth this down. Make sure this is in the right spot. Looks like it came up a little bit, so I'm going to reposition it. Okay. So as I mentioned, this side moved mainly because it's under so much pressure. So we have to reapply this side and then we'll take it over and we'll sew it again. So I brought it over to the work table so that I can position it right where I want it and rebaste it. Okay, so now we have the needle on the um, we're going to put the needle on the right side. So I'm going to use the lever here and position that needle over here. And we're going to use this inside edge of the presser foot to sew this inside edge of the binding. Again, I'm not going to do any reversing here. Now when we get down here, we want to make sure this is has stayed basted. Looks like it moved around a little bit. So just before we sew, we just want to make sure everything's right where we intend it to be. And that looks good like that. So I'm going to kind of hold it in place. Tilt my corner up so I don't hit the sewing machine. keep sewing around the perimeter. Anytime a zipper takes a curve, it must shrink on one side and expand on the other. We're going to mark and shrink one side. So these two edges are now sewing. These outer edges are not. We're going to take our coil number 10 zipper, and you can see that it pretty much fits perfectly uh, from edge to edge of the binding that we put on. And we're going to leave some hang off the edge and walk it around the perimeter to determine how much we need for this application. Always cut extra, so I'm going to cut it off right here. I want to cut it with scissors. So now we'll take this zipper and we're going to mark with uh, some chalk on this side right at the beginning of the curve with an arrow. And then we'll walk it around here. That's an approximate location of where the curve begins. And right here is approximately where the curve ends. What we're going to do is we're going to take this to the sewing machine and we're going to sew this, uh, pre-sew it in a way, which will cause it to shrink up and start to curve inward. This side has to shrink, this side has to expand. So we're going to separate the zippers right now, and to do that, just pull them apart. And then we'll take the half that we marked with the uh, um, arrows to the sewing machine. If you notice or not, we're actually using the Sarah Alter Feed now in the industrial tabletop of the workhorse servo motor. I'm going to put my needle in the right position here, and I'm going to reduce the stitch length, which will help to shrink it up a little bit more. We're going to keep it in straight stitch. So I'm just going to sew down this side from that arrow. 
to the next arrow. No reversing, we'll stop there. Here's the zipper that we sewed, and you can see it shrunk it up, caused a little bit of wrinkles in the flange. Here's the zipper we didn't sew. Now you can always go back to the sewing machine and sew it one more time, it'll make it even more of a curve. So it naturally wants to take a curve inward like that. In this chapter, we're going to baste and then sew the first half of our zipper. Now we're gonna take both these zippers and we are gonna put basting tape, not on the side with the teeth, but the side without the teeth. We're gonna use a quarter inch basting tape for this and we're gonna stick it fairly close to the uh, edge of the zipper's flange, which is about a sixteenth inch away. So I'm gonna do this on both uh, zippers. This is the outside surface with the binding. We're gonna flip it over and we're gonna take the zipper that has been shrunk up and we're gonna start peeling off the transfer paper, revealing the glue. And I'm going to base this so that the teeth are towards the uh, center here. And we're going to match it up with the uh, binding edge. So I'm not gonna pull I'm actually going to kind of put this down so that it shrinks up a teeny bit because this has to shrink. So I'm not really shrinking it much, but I am not pulling on the flange at all. Then when I get to this um, curve, I have to let it shrink up. And so I'm actually going to introduce a little bit of puckering in this. And if I distribute the puckers, make more puckers than fewer puckers, they're not as noticeable. So. As you can see, the edges are puckered up a little bit here because this definitely has to shrink up a lot. The amount of shrinkage or puckers is determined by you laying the zipper flat and matching up the zipper's flange edge with the binding's curved edge underneath. Now I'm pretty much back to the bottom of it, which is fairly straight, and I don't have to pucker it, but I do have to make sure that I don't pull on the zipper's flange as I baste. Notice I'm only peeling back some of the transfer paper a little at a time because I don't want to get glue all over the, the glass. And here again, I'm introducing small puckers in here to shrink up the zipper at this corner. Zippers flat, matching up the edges, basting them down. I don't know, maybe they're called wrinkles instead of puckers. <laughs> but anyway, you get the, the picture. We go all the way to the top here. This is easy because it's a straightaway just matching up the uh, end of the zipper's flange to the uh, binding edge underneath. And we have a little bit of extra zipper. We cut it a little bit long. So I'm just gonna trim that off here because we're gonna have a, a um, facing strip that goes across here later on. I now take this over to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew this down and that'll sew the zipper down and the binding down. We are not gonna install the other zipper yet. Okay, we have to start from the right hand side. So if I put my presser foot down and the uh, foot is up against the zipper's teeth, if my needle's in the left-hand side, that's too close to the zipper's edge. If the needle's in the center position, that's a little bit too close inside because I want to catch the binding on the underside. But I can't position the needle, obviously, to the right at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift the presser foot and I'm going to sew just slightly off. This presser foot will be slightly off from the zipper's teeth, and I'm gonna to try to stay consistent doing that, which puts the stitch in just about the right spot that I'd like it. So uh, I'm gonna sew back. I'm gonna put the machine back in a six millimeter straight stitch, because that's what I want, and we'll start sewing this on. Earlier, when we were sewing the binding on, we were using the Ultrafeet LSC1 plus package in a compact tabletop that you can easily store. Now we're using that same sewing machine in the Sayrite Industrial uh, sewing table with the workhorse servo motor underneath. So we get optimal slow speed control and power. Now don't worry about these wrinkles or puckers that are in the zipper's flange. We're just gonna press them down and and sew right over them. After the zipper is sewn down here, you can remove those stitches that shrunk up the zipper's flange. We're not gonna do that, but that can be done if you prefer. I'm going fairly slow around this corner because I wanna try to be accurate. If your glass hits the uh, throat of the sewing machine, just tilt it up like this so that you don't get an all sudden, sudden stop. 
then you can let go once you're past that. And then we'll just continue to sew all the way around till we reach the other end. No reason to do any reversing because we're going to cover that with a uh, facing edge later on. We'll grab the second half of the zipper, zip it on, baste it in place, and then sew it. Now this zipper is going to have to stretch when it gets down here to the curve. So I'm going to sew half of this zipper on and stop right here at the middle, which means I need to start on the right hand side and zip it together. I don't want to start on this side. So I'm going to take the slider and install it as I normally would. So I'm going to stop zipping right here at approximately the middle position. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel off the transfer paper on this side, revealing the glue all the way to this middle position. So it's got the basting tape on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start to push this down into this corner starting from here. And I'm going to push down hard on the zipper's teeth and try to match up the flange with the binding on the underside. And again, this side has to stretch and it'll want to un unbase because this is such a sharp turn. You can see it's, it's actually going down fairly well. And the reason I only do half of it is because it'll become unbasted when I take it to the sewing machine and sew. I'm actually going to stop basting there and then just make sure the top portion is lined up and baste it down. Okay, so this may want to come up, but don't worry about it. We can actually adjust this when we take it over to the sewing machine and sew. So let's take it over and sew this. So I'm going to put this under the presser foot and again I'm going to try to judge where the needle should go. The needle's in center position. I like that. I'm going to have this presser foot be off from the zipper's teeth with a little small gap here. Okay, so we're ready to sew now. No reversing was done at the beginning because the top portion of the zipper will be covered by facing. In a later video, we'll show how to do that. Now when I reach this uh, curve down here, I'm going to stop and make sure that it's still where I want it to be because I can make adjustments here. I know it's lined up right now. It's lined up all the way to this point and then it's coming unbasted as I talked about. So I'm going to put my finger here where we know that it's lined up and I'm going to sew to my finger. Not into my finger, to my finger. And then I'm going to bury my needle so I don't lose my spot. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to um, base this down by pulling and pushing on the zipper so that it's matched up like there. Like I've got now, what, two inches to sew, which is perfectly fine. You don't have to baste it all at once. Sew to my hand, and then I will rebaste again, pushing on the flange. I've got another two inches to sew. See, it's pretty easy doing it like this. Don't think of it as a huge job where you have to get it all done in one pass. This is uh, actually a great way to do it. And then I can do it again. Just keep doing this until you get around that curve. Matching up the uh, flange to the binding on the underside, sewing slowly around this perimeter. This arch is the bottom of a five gallon bucket, and it is the tightest radius or arch that we recommend. A more gradual radius is easier to sew. That looks pretty good. Why did we show the tightest arc possible? Well, because we wanted to show that it is possible to get it done, but the more gradual it is, the easier it is. Okay, now we're almost to this straight away here and I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew to approximately the center location and do a little bit of reversing. So right about here I'm going to go two straight stitches in reverse, maybe three, and then I'll pull it out and take it to the workbench. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to zip this and I'm actually going to pull the slider right off. You don't have to worry about that because it'll get in the way when we're sewing. I'm going to peel off the transfer paper 
And instead of starting here, I'm going to start here where we left off sewing. And I'm basically going to follow that same procedure. Push down on the zipper, push the flange over, stretch this, and baste it in position. And then we'll take it to the sewing machine and we'll sew it in the same manner. And we'll show that here in a second. So we're going to put this back in the sewing machine where we stopped sewing and sew the same direction that we were. So I'm going to put it in here. I'm going to sew like an inch on top of those previous stitches. I'm going to do a little bit of reversing here. And we're going to sew to where it's basted on. Okay, I'm going to bury my needle and I'm going to do the exact same procedure here that we did on the other side. I'm going to baste it on a couple inches in, uh, of area that I'm ready to sew and hold it in place with my finger. Bury the needle and keep doing this until we work it around the entire perimeter. Not too difficult. It's now time to slit our clear vinyl window material between the binding. We're gonna now separate the zipper just by putting my finger in there. So if our flange goes over two inches from the edge, that means it's going to rest right about here. And so I'm going to mark that and I'm going to do that same thing over here. What I want to do is I want to take an awl and open up the zipper and I want to punch it right through at that, zip, at that chalk mark location. And I don't want to go through the binding. I only want to go through the glass just so I can get my seam ripper through there. So now what I'll do is I'll take my seam ripper and uh, I will uh, start cutting the glass with it. And I find the seam ripper actually works pretty well. You might want to get a second helper just to kind of spread the zipper open. You want to be careful not to cut your binding. That's why we have that little gap between the binding. Um, so go slowly and do this very carefully. So the slider goes on, as you can see, it's got a lip on this side and uh, no lip on that side. If you, if you try to put it on backwards, it won't go on on a coil zipper. Um, so we're gonna put one slider on. You could put two if you want. I think I am gonna put two on this one. And then we'll have this one go on this side, going down. Don't have to have two, but it's kinda nice to have two because they can kinda run into each other. The curved zipper is now installed in our clear vinyl window material, but don't go away. We're going to talk about what to do if you get a double-sided tape or seam stick basting tape all over your clear vinyl window material. And we're also going to show the tools and the materials that we used. If you get double-sided tape glue residue on your glass, like there's a lot right here, some over here and over here, uh, that can be removed actually with a 3M specialty adhesive remover. This is recommended by Strataglass, so watch what we do here. So we want to get a soft, clean rag saturated a little bit with the specialty adhesive remover by 3M. And then where the glue residue is, you just take the rag. This is the glues on this side of the clear vinyl, and you can see it just it's just appearing. And this is actually recommended by Strataglass. So it's not just our recommendation. Supposedly it doesn't hurt the glass according to them. And there we go, the residue is removed. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and also subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of new videos when they become available. 
We're also gonna show videos that will explain how to put a facing around the perimeter of this curtain. And one of those facing pieces will have a zipper. And then in a separate video, we're gonna show how to put in a smiley face zipper in clear vinyl window material with a permanent screen that'll be in place here. So no CMs and mosquitoes won't attack you. Coming up next is the materials list and the tools list. You'll find a large selection of clear vinyl window materials at Sailrite. We use 30 gauge Stratoglass. Always remember that a coiled zipper goes around the corner better than a Bislon type zipper. So be sure if you're going to be installing curved zippers that you use the number 10 coil zipper that's available from Sailrite. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe and click the bell to be notified of new videos when they become available. I'm Eric Grant and from all of us here at Sailrite, thanks for watching.